If you're installing vinyl flooring in your house, it's inevitable at some point you're gonna have to work backwards. And I'm doing a seamless vinyl flooring install, which means I've gotta do this entire bedroom backwards. And this does create some unique challenges. A simpler way of installing is just to use the threshold between two sections of flooring, say the hallway in a bedroom, like this. That way you can orient the boards and install them left to right, the standard way. But I think seamless floors are a more premium look and that's why I wanna do them. Before I did anything else, I grabbed a scrap piece of my vinyl plank flooring and I used it as a spacer to trim my door casing to height. This way the new flooring can get underneath it. I also highly recommend knee pads. That way your jeans don't end up looking like mine. It'll also save your knees if you're flooring for more than a day. I've secured my floors in place here while I'm working in other rooms, but it's so awesome how I've got this little bit of my edge exposed. I set up this example to show what it would be like if your seam was right in the middle of your doorway. You'll find that it's really hard to get underneath the other plank. To assist, I'll use a scrap board. I'll work it underneath, There we go. Now back to our actual doorway. The first thing I'm gonna do is take a straight edge and just bump it up against my existing edge. If I look at this wall for reference, I'm flaring out just a little bit. And if I double check it with the seam in the existing wood floors, I can tell that I'm out by about a 16th of an inch. My plan is to use the tapping block to scoot these floors back just a tiny bit. In this close up shot, you can see I was able to move it a little and I think that's perfect. After that, I grabbed an eight foot board with a really straight edge to sort of extend our flooring line. That way I could measure from all four corners and make sure that it was square. All right, I've got 145 minus an eight, and that's 145 minus a 16th. I'm gonna give the back of this straight edge a little bit of a love tap, and we'll call that good because there could be enough deflection in the drywall to account for that small difference in measurement. And I used this scrap vinyl piece, that way the hallway pieces wouldn't move. Now I couldn't quite get my first plank into place because of the wall, so I marked halfway through the door casing and extended that line out and cut it with my jigsaw. I used a really fine tooth blade. If you're getting any tear out, either your blade is too coarse or it's just gone dull. And now we should be able to lift up this back edge of the flooring and get it underneath the other piece. That looks great. I'm gonna grab a spacer and put it here on the end, and I'll use my packing block to lock it in place. I picked up this 40 pack of spacers on Amazon with a half inch spacer on the top and a quarter inch on the other side. We'll be using a quarter inch space around all of our walls for expansion. To measure and mark this last piece, I'm gonna flip its orientation to how I'm gonna install it. I'll make sure and leave a quarter inch expansion joint and then use a utility knife with a nice sharp blade with a speed square to get a clean cut. A lot of people like to break these vinyl planks against their knee, but I like to use my hand against the ground. I put the piece in the same orientation it's going to be installed in, and then I marked where the wall is hitting it. And I'll put this one in the same way. I'll lock it in here on the end, and then just slide it in place. So we've made it through the doorway, got our first row, and I'm going to screw down this straight edge. And with that positive stop, we can work from left to right like you would any traditional floor here in the closet area. Marking and cutting these pieces were really simple. It's just like laying down a traditional floor. You want to have your board in the same orientation that it's going to go down when you measure the edge of the wall and the depth of the cut before you use your jigsaw. I used my tapping block to make sure that the vinyl plank went underneath the door casing and was sitting against the spacer in the wall. I needed to remove the last piece in my first row to get this second piece in the second row, but once it was in place, I was able to reinstall it no problem. That's what's so great about having this straight edge screwed down. I know it's in the same spot. And throughout this process, I've been keeping a lot of scraps. That way I can fill in the pieces. I just gotta remember to flip the orientation before I mark it. And don't forget a quarter inch space between the plank and the wall. Anytime I'm up against the wall or I don't have room to use my tapping block, that's when I use my pull bar and the mallet to make sure and close any gaps between the flooring pieces. I do want to get through this closet section in the video pretty quick because once we've got our first couple rows established, it's really like installing floors the normal way. 
And I was really fortunate. I had some table saw cutoffs that were the exact right width for this final row in the closet. And so with that complete, I could remove my straight edge and continue working backwards. At any point in time during this project, I've got eight boards of flooring open. That way I can mix and match, making sure I don't get duplicate pieces right next to each other. Doing this can also let you prep enough pieces for a few rows in advance. Also, be sure to keep looking back two or three rows to make sure you're not making a repeating patterns or any kind of brick layout, unless that's the specific look that you're going for. In just a little bit in this video, I'll show you how to install full rows at a time, but if you're installing one plank at a time, make sure you're hitting both the ends and the edges with your tapping block. Be sure that you always check the directions that come with the flooring that you're using, because it'll show you which way to install your pieces forwards and back. Sometimes you'll want to connect the ends first, like this, and then slide the floor into position. And then tap it in place. But these boards from Floret connect better edge first, making sure to lift up on the far side of the floor. And this is where it's easy to tell in person if your board has seated well. If it doesn't sit down flat, reinstall it, then use your tapping block. You can also piece together your entire row and then attach it to your existing floor. And I'll show you how. You'll need pre-cut pieces. And then you'll link all your planks together end to end. This is easier with a partner on the opposite end, but you can still do this by yourself. Make sure you lift up the opposite end of your plank and work down the row. And then knock the whole row at one time. What's nice about this is you're limiting how often you're going from cutting boards to installing them with either your pull bar or your tapping block. And switching operations really takes time. You've got to change tools and think about what you're doing. I'm looking for that click. If your plank or row isn't sitting flat yet, make sure you get that click and get it to sit flat before you use your tapping block so you don't cause damage. That looks great. That looks really good. We don't have anything flaring out or dipping in. At this point in the project, I'm committing to the row by row move. It's just quicker and easier. And I'm waiting to hear this click, then it all sit flat. There we go. And really quick, I'd like to give a big thanks to the sponsor of today's episode, Squarespace. If you need a website, online store, or just a custom domain, Squarespace is your one-stop shop, and you need zero website building experience. With Fluid Engine, Squarespace's new website designing platform, it's never been easier to unlock your unbreakable creativity. Just start with one of Squarespace's best-in-class templates that look great right out of the box, and then you can literally customize every aspect from there with their enhanced drag-and-drop interface on desktop and mobile. If you start your online store with Squarespace, there are no limits to the number of products that you can sell, whether that's a physical good, a digital good, or a service product. And if you want to take payments in person, Squarespace has got you covered. By connecting the Square card reader to the Squarespace app, you can make sure that all of your sales, accounting, and inventory are up to date online and in person. So to learn more, make sure and follow my link down in the description that's squarespace.com slash modern builds where you can build out your entire Squarespace site before entering any of your credit card info. And then when it's time to make your site live, don't forget to use my code modern builds for 10% off your first site, store, or domain through Squarespace. Thanks again to Squarespace and you all for making these videos possible. Let's finish out these floors. Always remember, when you're cutting your planks to length, make sure that they're in the reverse orientation that you'll be installing them when you're marking them with your pencil. A traditional tapping block like this will work great. Combined with the mallet and the pull bar, it is what you need. And while I was online one day, I picked up this tapping block that you don't need to use with a mallet. But this is just a heavy HDPE block that you can use to tap and nudge all of your planks into place. I've gotta say, this thing is really convenient and it's got quite a bit of mass. But what I realized is really cool is I can keep my mallet with my pull bar instead of having to go back and forth because I always forget to grab it and bring it with me. Now make sure and stay tuned because I end up having second thoughts on this tapping block. And as I went, I made sure that I constantly opened up new boxes. That way I got fresh pieces and I didn't find myself just going to the end of all the boxes and opening eight new ones. 
The gray wash luxury vinyl plank flooring that I'm using is a part of the Moden line by Florette. They were nice enough to supply it for this video and give me a discount code for you all. So big thanks to them and I'll make sure and leave links to tools, materials, and supplies, everything you need down below. Now what you see me doing here is prepping a couple rows at a time. What I realized is that if I did one full row quicker than I could do piece by piece, I imagine I could probably do multiple rows quicker than I could do one row at a time. This worked really well and further limited the amount of times that I was switching between operations and tools. It also gave me a second chance to see more than one row of pieces at a time in case I did wanna swap anything out. That worked pretty well, I think I'm gonna do it again. I decided to just go for it and see what happens, so I prepped six rows. I cut all of the pieces to length, and then I stacked them in order. That way I could just dispense them out, knowing that everything should be perfect. When you're doing this, make sure the ends connect really well. That way it's a solid row and that they move together instead of separating when you try and slide them underneath the existing floors. I like to put a spacer on each end of my row, that way there's not any subtle shifting or gaps created between my planks. That's the second time that this has happened using this tapping block. It happened to this piece too. I've installed a thousand square feet plus using this one and that never happened, so I am ditching this. If I'm doing something wrong, let me know. I seriously was disappointed to move back to the traditional tapping block just because the other one was quicker, but if I'm going to be breaking planks, I don't want to be using it. Oh, but if you know why that was happening, please let me know. Alright, I've only got a couple of more rows left, but the sun is setting. I think this is a good place to call it for today. It's been very productive, and we'll get everything wrapped up tomorrow. I only had three rows left, so I measured and cut all of my pieces to length before installation off camera. As I approached the wall, I kept using the tapping block and my mallet to make sure that the edges were connecting well, eventually incorporating the pull bar too. All right, now we're gonna do the last row. I'll use my tape measure to measure the distance from the floor and the wall. We've got four inches here, and we've got about a quarter inch extra here. And I hope you can tell that the wall's actually flaring out. On this end of the floor, you can see how small this last piece is. And down here, it is quite a bit wider. I'm gonna make sure and knock my floors in the correct direction to try and even out this gap as much as possible, but I'm gonna have to cut this last row on a little bit of a taper, and you might need to do the same. Now I'm gonna show you how to cut this taper, but first, you need all of your pieces cut to length. First, you'll rotate your board 180 degrees so it's opposite the way that you'll install it, and then slide your plank down so that the end where you're going to be cutting it is also the end that you're using to reference and mark. You can see how I'm basically sliding so that the end of my board that I'm marking is also the same end that it'll be touching when it's installed. If I didn't do this, my taper would be a mirror image of what I actually wanted. I highly recommend using a circular saw, jigsaw, or table saw to rip your planks to width, but you could score and break off your piece and get it to the right width as well. The longer you score and snap, the tougher it's going to be to get a clean break, but it's doable. The pull bar is critical here, making sure that this last row interlocks with the existing floors. And I gotta admit, I'm a little embarrassed of my jigsaw cut on this last piece on the left side. That's a little more than I want, but Trim still has a quarter inch coverage. My cut got a little wonky and off the line, but it's still a half inch gap off the wall, and that's workable. And we're done! I've still got a little bit of quality control to do. Before I remove all of my spacers, I'm gonna make sure that there's no gaps on the ends of any of my boards, and if there are, I'll use my pull tool to hit it into place. In fact, if you just wanna run down your entire wall, that's not a bad idea. You'll find that the spacers are really locked in on the other wall after doing this, but the pull bar can help get them out. We did it! And before I show you the results, let's check out what this space looked like. The house I'm working on does have original hardwood floors, but they were damaged and stained so bad I had to replace them. And now let's check out these afters. Vinyl flooring is so great because that damage can never happen. It's scratch resistant and basically waterproof. I really like the gray wash look that I chose because it's gonna help the wood tones in the house pop. I think it's awesome there's no transitions or seams in the doorway. It's a subtle but fancy detail that I hope gets noticed by the next renters or owners. So thanks again for watching. I really hope you learned something. If you did, leave a thumbs up and we'll see you next time on Mike's First Flip. It's Mike's First Flip.